Uh, tonight I have chosen to document <clears throat> the building of a of a choke ballon as it's known although it is not a ballon uh, for use at the end of a coaxial transmission line into a G5 RV antenna in particular on 20 meters and what I'm going to use here is uh, this is brand new let's see right here if we can read it uh, it's uh, Belden 9913 50 ohm RG8 we're gonna be dealing with two simple formulas one of them is the formula for resonant frequency which is resonant frequency equals 1 over 2 pi times the square root of L C we're going to measure C so we're, we're going to know what that one is the other formula we're going to be using is uh, ZO which is the characteristic impedance of the uh, transmission line which we happen to know already ZO equals 50 ohms equals uh, the square root of L over C and those are the two basic formulas and all we're really going to need because we're going to we know what Z is we're going to measure C and we're going to calculate L and then we're going to build a coaxial coil here and we're going to see if we can get FR equal to 14.25 megahertz Today is uh, <clears throat> November the 22nd, 2012, and what I'm going to build tonight, and I'm going to figure out how to build first, I'll show you my method of doing it, and then uh, I'll install it and we'll make some, uh, some real measurements. What I'm going to build is a, uh, it's sometimes known as a coaxial ballon, although it's not a true ballon. The word ballon B-A-L-U-N come is uh, comes from two words, B-A-L-A-N-C-E, balanced and uh, unbalanced, and we combine the words to uh, bal and and it means a, a transformer, a transformer to match a unbalanced line which is a coaxial line to a balanced line which is like a dipole or 300 ohm twin lead or 450 ohm open wire whatever whatever kind of balanced line you have and here's the interesting thing that many of you may know is if you take a transformer and you put one turn in it on the primary and then on the secondary you put one turn in it like this you can put this to your coax and then you can put this to your balanced antenna like a uh, dipole and since you got one turn here and one turn here or ten turns and ten turns whatever it is then you have a one to one uh, impedance transformation that's pretty common the most common one around that you actually have used many times is a four to one which is a one turn here and a two turn here this is a one to four because and this usually goes to like R uh, G 59 59 which is 75 ohms and this one often goes out to uh, 300 ohms and think about it this uh, turns ratio is 2 to 1 but the impedance transformation is the square of the turns ratio so the turns ratio is 1 to 2 but the impedance transformation is the square of that which would be 1 to 4 so if you have 75 ohms here you'd have 300 here and a 1 to 1 of course is 50 to 50 or 75 to 75 or whatever but um, in our case, what we're going to build actually is a choke. It's often referred to as a, a choke ballon, but all it really is is um, is this. Where you put your transmission line in here, 
and you put uh, the other lo your load out here whatever it might be and what it really does is it does not transfer uh, trans uh, translate impedances like here one to one or four to one is uh, what it does is it chokes off so to speak the uh, current from flowing in the transmission line the feed line the coax line it stops it it chokes it off it's a choke ballon ballon still a misused word here but anyway uh, the approach we're going to take is this right here when it comes to um, there's two basic formulas we'll use one of them is for resonant frequency resonant frequency equals 1 over 2 pi times the square root of LC we're not going to try to derive that it's derived from X of L equals 2 pi FL and X of C equals 1 over 2 pi FC if you set those equal to each other which X of L equals X sub C at resonance then you will get this if you if if you do the calculation, we don't need to go there. And then uh, the second one we're going to use is ZO, which is the characteristic impedance of the transmission line equal to square root of L over C. Because what we're going to be able to measure directly is C, because we have instruments to measure it. We have a capacitance meter here, we have one here, and we have one here. And we're going to use all three of them to verify that our one foot piece of coax here's another piece just like it except I took the shield all the way off it doesn't make a bit of difference we're going to be able to directly measure C right here we know that ZO equals 50 ohms because because uh, it says so and darn it doesn't say it on here but anyway this is um, uh, Belden 90, oh, darn, I wish I could remember what it was. Now, I've got a whole roll over here. It's, um, it's written on it right here. It is. See, Belden 9913 50 ohm RG8U type coax. That's what it says here. I don't know if you can actually read that or not. But anyway, that's what we're dealing with. That's the coax. And here's a one foot piece, and here's a one foot piece. I just cut them off just for experiment tonight. So, what we're going to do is uh, directly measure C, and we'll get a number for that. And uh, we know ZO, and so we'll calculate L. And then we'll put it into, and I've already done all this, of course, we'll put it into a, uh, an Excel spreadsheet right here. No, this is number of feet, this is the capacitance. For one foot and this is per foot over here this is the inductance and this is its resonance frequency just so happens i'll go ahead and cheat here and show you that nine feet of it ends up at 14.1 megahertz see that 1.41 e plus seven right there nine feet of it that's what it's going to take but now i've jumped ahead okay first of all let's do this let's look at our capacitance meter here zero it out We'll be very careful to make our measurements good. Let's clip our negative lead on there. Make sure it's zero. And it's been warming up for quite some time. We've, there we go. 25.33. I'm going to write that down. 25.33. Then we can take it off of there. And uh, we'll put it over here on this uh, Tektronix meter. See what it says. And it says that it's, this thing will focus just right. Without a focus, it's pretty aggravating. It says it's just a hair less than 25. So we'll call it 25. And then here's a beautiful old uh, general radio. If we put it up here. Unfortunately, I can't have, I, this thing nulls beautifully, but uh, I'm not going to be able to make this thing stay there. I don't, yeah, it did. Oh, wow, it's hanging in there. See, we, um, we crank it up here, and we null it. See the null right there? We get that to right, and this thing's pretty darn accurate for such an old instrument. 
This one says it's about mm, 27. 27, 25, and just a hair over 25. So I'm just going to call it 25. For not knowing anything better. By the way, I'm, uh, to measure uh, small capacitance like this on this uh, GR instrument, I do drive it at uh, 20 kilohertz here externally. You, you get better readings for a uh, very small capacitor. Let me turn that back down. Okay, so we got 25 picofarads. Anyway, I guess now that I've already gone and jumped ahead, what we do over here in this Excel spreadsheet is we put in this is feet. One, two, three, four, five feet, whatever. The capacitance for one foot, this is just measuring it times two, three, four, five, and so on. This one uh, is, I've got A2 times uh, the capacitance times 50 ohms squared, which would be its inductance. And here's its resonant frequency where we actually do the two pi times the square root of L LC. There's its resonant frequency. So I'm wanting it for 14 megahertz, which nicely worked out to be 14.1 megahertz at uh, nine feet. So what we're ending up here with is a circuit of a nine foot roll of this coax right here. And I'll put uh, connectors on both ends and then we'll make uh, sure that it works properly. And what we end up with is what we have here is this 25 picofarads and the inductance of uh, whatever it ends up being uh, 6.25 e to the minus 8 uh, so it's uh, that would be 0 that would be 0 0.0625 microhenries per foot this is distributed capacitance and distributed inductance so we have that much capacitance and that much inductance over this foot distributed. It's not lumped. But what we're going to do by winding it into a coil about 8 or 10 inches in diameter is we're going to lump it, so to speak. We're going to take all this distributed capacitance that we would have in 9 feet, which would keep it from being resonant, and we're going to lump it together by winding it into a coil and we're going to use that as the choke and if you saw the video I made just the other day about I made a the question what well, the video was do uh, balance really help and uh, we're going to see if this one really helps so I probably won't be able to finish this until tomorrow we will go ahead and wind the uh, the choke tonight and uh, if I can get it installed then we'll see Okay, now here's our choke. It's exactly nine feet of uh, the RG8 with uh, PL259s on each end. I'm going to go install it. And uh, if I can get a picture of it in the dark, I'll show you and then we'll go up and uh, make some measurements. Okay, here is our new device installed. Uh, coming out of the bottom is the feed line going up. And you can't see it in the dark. That's the 300 ohm twin lead going up to the uh, G5RV style antenna. So now we'll go up in the uh, attic where the station is and see uh, if it makes any difference. Okay, as with uh, last night, we're using the old Collins S line stuff, and I'm going to see what our four. I've, I have adjusted it, uh, <clears throat> the, uh, the uh, antenna tuner. For, uh, there's our 100 watts forward, there's our zero watts reflected. Right now the, um, the, the uh, bird line section is uh, between the transmitter and the uh, antenna tuner, which again makes the uh, transmitter very happy. So let's move this line section between the output of the tuner and the antenna like we did last night see if it makes any difference hope it does okay here's the moment of truth uh, the line section now is between this is the antenna power going that way and the output so now the uh, 
line section between the output of the uh, tuner and the antenna itself going through that uh, that choke we just made. There's our forward power. There's our reverse power. Still interesting, huh? Still get some reflected power. That is so interesting. All of our power is forward now that this old uh, transmitter with my weaker tube does drop and rise and fall a little bit, but still it's right there close to the 100 watts. But 11 watts reflected. Well, that's sure different than it was last night without it, because last night without it I was getting 55 forward and um, about 11. So I guess we still don't have the perfect match, but we have uh, improved it. There you go, for what it's worth.